In this Scratch tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a zombie apocalypse, which will allow your player to shoot zombies. Alright, so we're going to get started with a brand new Scratch project, as you see here. And we're just going to go ahead and delete this um, sprite, this start and sprite, this cat. Click on the blue trash can and just hover over, choose a sprite. Let's go ahead and click on paint. Just hover over it. And then when the menu pops up, just click paint. And we're gonna start off by creating our own sprite for our player. same method here just hover over choose a sprite and then click paint and now we're gonna go ahead and draw our projectile now one more time we will you do this one more time to create our zombie we have all three sprites created you can see they're called sprite one sprite two and sprite three i like to customize these names you can see the full information about the sprite right here and just go ahead and erase the name and let's name this one zombie we'll also name this one bullet and then we'll name this one player With that set, it is now time to code. Let's begin with the first event, which is when the green flag is click. And we're gonna be using the arrow keys to control this player. So let's get four if and then condition. We're gonna use these four conditions to check for the four directions, up, down, left, and right. And yes, you could use the event system here that will check for a certain key press and then you can check for the arrow key but I find that this is actually a little bit laggy so we're not going to use that let's get a forever loop and we're going to put all of our four conditions inside the forever loop so just drag the top boom just like that and then finally let's connect this all of this block to the when the flag is clicked now I'm going to assume you're familiar with the X and Y coordinates, as in the X represent anything left and right, and the Y would trigger up and down. So we're gonna get two of these change uh, Y by for up and down, and simply add in a positive value goes up, and simply add in a negative value will go down. We also want two of them for left and right, so we'll go ahead and get the X as well. And again, positive value on the X go right, negative value on the X goes left. Now that we have all of our directions, all we need now is the keys that we're going to be checking for. It's important to align these movements with the correct keys. So let's head over into Sensing, and we're gonna look for the one that says key and a certain key pressed. We're gonna bring out four of these. That's one, two, three, and four. Now we're gonna change the top one to up, and then down arrow, right arrow, then left arrow. Let's go ahead and see how this works. So it simply says these if conditions are empty, if something happens here, 
And you can see the shape are the same. We just kind of drag it right here and connect it. You see how it glows white? When it glows white like that, we gotta just release it. And so now the condition says, if this key is pressed, what do we wanna do? Change the Y by this positive value, which will cause it to go up. Let's do that for the next one. If this key is pressed, which is the down arrow, I wanna change the Y by the negative value, which will cause it to go down. And let's continue with the remaining. When I played a game, I did notice that it's a big, <laughs> it's a bit too big. Let's go ahead and just grab the um, set size which I always recommend setting the size of the sprite inside the script. Um, and there is a, a, a section here where you can just set it yourself inside the um, inside the settings, right below the X value, but I'd rather just do it inside the script. Next, we need rotation. So we grab the flag again, forever loop, then inside the motion, we'll go ahead and tell it to point towards our mouse position right here point towards there's a drop down we can tell it to point towards other things which will be useful later but we want to go ahead and just select the mouse pointer so we're going to point towards mouse pointer always so that goes in forever and when we run this both of these um, when the flag is clicked worked at the same time so we have movement and rotation now it is moving a little fast so just go ahead and you can decrease these values keep them all about the same and then you have a much uh, slower maybe better movement next let's go ahead and set up a system here to spawn in some bullets so you just say uh, forever when we click the flag on a condition here you want to spawn something in when we press the mouse button down so we get the mouse button down from in the sense and put it right here so this will happen when we press the mouse button down we want to create a clone so we get the create a clone um and then the drop down we just choose our bullet so we're gonna create a clone of our bullet however uh we don't want to create uh just a bunch of clones over and over so we need to set a little delay so grab this from the controller, the wait for seconds, and just put something like 0 0.2. Next, it's time to code the bullet. On the bullet, we'll grab the flag, and we'll need to hide the bullet when the game starts. So race officially, when the game starts officially, hide the bullet. Next, we want the bullet to do something when it spawns in as a clone, like we set up on the player. So what we need is another event that tells it to do something when it spawns in as a clone. This one right here. Says when I spawn as a clone, we want to... First thing we do want to do <coughs> is we're going to need to set the size. We're going to need to tell it where to go to connect to the player. Um, we're going to need to tell it uh, which direction it should be pointing in. So we're going to go ahead and tell it right here. Uh, first thing is it needs to go to the player That's the first thing and then the direction it should be pointing should be the same direction the player is facing But currently it just says 90 So in order to tell it to point in the player's direction you go to sense in Screw on down down here where it says backdrop number of stage and you can see that um, you're able to actually fit this block into that same shape right here. <clears throat> so simply drag it over and you see how it highlights, it fits right in there. Now it reads point in the direction of the backdrop <laughs> number of stage. So what you want to do to tell it to switch to player is to click the drop down right next to stage not this one here but if you click this one here you see player and then if you go back to this one you'll be able to see direction so now it reads point in the direction basically the direction of the player 
with that we can then just show and um, this should make the bullet spawn in the direction of the player I'm gonna grab a repeat until as you see here and tell it to move basically forward so what I'm telling the bullet to do here is just to continuously go forward until the condition and if the condition is true delete so we run the code inside until until what until this right until we're touching the edge and voila now you could also go up here and we need to add the size to resize the bullet right there I'm thinking about 20% and so as we test this uh, we notice that the bullet is actually spawning from the center right here from the center of the player when you spawn it in so um, we wanted to spawn actually at the at the point of the bullet of the gun so let's go ahead and fix this just open this up right here and we're gonna tell it to basically move forward just a little bit after um, after it spawns in and goes where it needs to go before we show it just want to move it <coughs> move it a little bit forward and I think about let's see I think about 45 seems to be all right so I'm gonna keep it with that and also just increasing the move step inside the until loop will make it go a lot faster now we're already over 10 minutes so for the rest of the code for example the ones on the zombie I'm just gonna kind of show you what it looks like and I trust you can just pause the video and copy those if you need but it's gonna be relatively the same just like the bullet you just need to hide it because you're gonna spawn it in but uh, as for the rest of the code you're gonna also need the when I start as a clone and a few other changes that you can see right here simply pause the video this is what the code of the zombie looks like one block to spawn it in and make it drift towards the player and the other one to detect when it's hit by the bullet now how is these spawning in um, I've added a code to the stage you can see right here this code simply tells it to spawn in a zombie um, about every second or so um, where you go from here you can just simply maybe add in an actual backdrop something that you like but uh, anywhere you, you can go anywhere from this point <laughs> basically it's up to you so again thank you for watching guys hopefully this was educational to someone if it was let me know I always want to know Thank <laughs> you.